This is not getting discussed on the mainstream media. Not only are they wrong legally, but the fact that they would do this is outrageous. This is an overreaction and really nonsense. How would you react if this was your son or your daughter? It's the offense of knowing the truth. It's the offense of having an alternate worldview. Saying God bless you someone is not a violation of the law. Welcome to the broadcast, everyone. Of course, in the news has been Planned Parenthood and the situation with the sale of fetal body parts. We've been talking about that on radio. We're glad that we have our television audience with us. And I was able to connect with a long-term friend of mine who is really the expert on Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood. In fact, the very first book that I read on the issue of Planned Parenthood was George Grant's. This is the, really the textbook, George Grant book on Planned Parenthood called Grand Illusions. Now, there's a brand new version of this that's out right now called Killer Angel. We encourage you to get it, but we're thrilled that we have uh, in our studios uh, George Grant. And George, it's great to be with you, and thanks for coming in. Absolutely. So great to see you again, Jay. We have been friends for a long time. George and I were working on these pro-life movement issues 30 years ago. Yeah, a long time. <laughs> that, that ages you, my and friend. It, 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 well, look, this is the nature of the, this is who we are and what we do. So uh, before we went on air, I, I mentioned to you that I thought that kind of 30 years of our work, we're starting to see now some of the – what we knew then about Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry is now – becoming known by the entire world yes and it's undeniable at this point yeah it will come to nothing if we don't have hot pursuit and if we don't do the right things at this point and make sure that this uh doesn't turn into sort of the story of the day that yeah. disappears yeah which is always the risk it especially is a risk. in washington but yeah. if we do our job yep. uh, america knows now and c- quite frankly I, I i am not running into too many folks, nope. including my most liberal friends, yep. who are not really sickened by what they have seen, what they have heard. And it's not just the videos. It's the whole attitude, yep. the, the defense of the videos, the defense of the sale of body parts, the uh, the cavalier. cavalier. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> certainly that. You know, the, Cecilia Richards complained about the tone of the her defense was, well, the tone was wrong. Well, the right. reality is, but that is their tone. And and, exactly. and, and and you take it a step further, and I, I've said this, the gruesomeness of abortion, which we've been litigating and dealing with on policy issues you have as well for three decades. So this to us is nothing new. We, we knew this was right. the, this is what they do. They worship at the altar of abortion. I mean, this is their business. This is their faith. The, the tragedy, I think, that uh, you mentioned just now is does it just become the news item of the day and then something else happens and we all go off to that? So let's talk about first because this is – some of the history you have here is great. Who is Planned Parenthood? Who are they? Where did they come from? Well, Planned Parenthood is a part of a well-orchestrated movement that began before World War I uh, in New York City, in Greenwich Village, with a handful of radicals who believed that the world needed to change. Uh, this was uh, right on the cusp of the Russian Revolution. It was when Marxist ideas... Uh, we're still sort of um, rather new among the uh, New York intelligentsia. And so the, the same movement that gave birth to things like the ACLU gave birth to Planned Parenthood. Margaret Sanger, uh, right. along with John Reed, um, you know, Will and Ariel Durant, Edna St. Vincent Millay, H.G. Uh, uh, Wells, uh, George Bernard Shaw, they were a part of this sort of a uh, neo-socialist movement that uh, that desired to see the world change in radical ways, overthrow the old Christian mores. And they developed strategies, very specific strategies. Roger Baldwin, for instance. Right, ACLU founder. ACLU founder had this notion that there could be manipulated test cases. Uh, find a judge, find a jurisdiction, right. find a case, use emotional appeal, and change the world. Right. through court precedents. Right. It was a brilliant strategy. Sure. Yep. Margaret Sanger, who was the founder of Planned Parenthood, believed that sex was the key to bringing about the revolution that would change everything, not just family, not just uh, uh, birth control laws, but literally change the world. And so she sought to use the lever of, uh, of sex to, uh, to, to be the the sort of catalyst for a radical social revolution. She associated 
uh, very closely with the radical labor movement of the day, people like Bill Haywood mm -hmm. and Emma Goldman. She hung around with uh, anarchists and others. She realized, you know, you're, you're not going to change the world with anarchy. Right. Those kinds of violent revolutions collapse eventually. But a revolution that starts in the bedroom, a revolution that appeals to our basest nature, a, a revolution that promises absolute freedom and, um, and, and no constraints, no constraints, cast off every moray and, right. and, and live fully and freely however you wish. Now that, she believed, had appeal. We've got another segment ahead dealing with this issue of Planned Parenthood. But, folks, we need your help. I encourage you to go to ACLJ.org. I'm urging from all 50 states that you sign this petition. I want to play for you a soundbite right now before we go to this break where the President of the United States thanks Planned Parenthood, says God bless you, Planned Parenthood, and God bless America. Take a listen to this. Thank you, Planned Parenthood. God bless you. God bless America. I believe we should never use the phrase God when talking about Planned Parenthood, and certainly not God bless Planned Parenthood. Speak out for these unborn children. Stop what Planned Parenthood's doing. It's ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. That's ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255. Back with more with our friend George Grant in just a moment. You already know that the nation's largest abortion provider, Planned Parenthood, received $1.5 in taxpayer dollars in the last three years alone. That money frees up other funds so Planned Parenthood can perform hundreds of thousands of abortions. Now, a startling and gruesome revelation. Planned Parenthood is now harvesting body parts from butchered babies. A senior Planned Parenthood abortionist has been caught on camera detailing how they crush the baby, altering the abortion procedure so they are, quote, very good at getting heart, lung, liver. Then they sell the baby's organs. It's time to stop this abhorrent practice. Stand with the American Center for Law and Justice and demand that Congress defund Planned Parenthood. No more taxpayer dollars for this abortion giant. Call now, 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255, or add your name online, aclj.org. The connection between her and, and the racial aspect of this. We got a number of callers that have called in over the last week saying, was she really talking about Margaret Sanger, really trying to eliminate or curtail or control the black race in the United States of America? Yeah, it, you know, you have to make a distinction between what I call redneck racism yep. and scientific racism. Mm. She was a scientific racist. She was very, very uh, slick and uh, cosmopolitan about mm -hmm. her racism. But she actually believed that uh, in a kind of neo-Darwinian uh, world where she was trying to accelerate the evolution of a new race, right. it was necessary to eliminate the lower end, as she thought of it, of the gene pool. And she identified the lower end of the gene pool. So who were they? Who, were, In her view, who were the lower ends of the gene pool? Margaret Sanger's words here. Uh, it, in her words, they were Slavs, Eastern Europeans, yep. and blacks. So that was her group that, that she targeted. That's her group. Yep. And sh what she wanted to do was she wanted to eliminate that part of the gene pool so that she could create, in her words, a race of thoroughbreds. What very Nazi-esque. I mean, it's a very similar ideology. Well, in fact, in the early days, she was close with a number of the people who were a part of the scientific program in Germany. Dr. Ernst Rudin, for instance, yep. for a time sat on her board, contributed mm. articles to the Birth Control Review, her publication. He, he went on to be Hitler's director of euthanasia. Right. He was a part of the program to cleanse the Third Reich. Uh, she, uh, she wrote a very positive review of a scandalous book written in 1923 by Lothrop Stoddard. She wrote the review herself. Uh, the title of the book was The Rising Tide of Color Against White World Supremacy. She wrote the review, and it was a glowing review, mm. talking about the necessity to have scientific and medical direction to the population of the future world. 
Uh, and that's the, the 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 name of that sort of philosophy yeah. was eugenics. Right. Uh, Francis Galton, who was a um, a cousin of Charles Darwin, devised this notion. It's a sort of Darwinian with a right. little bit of Malthusianism right. thrown in and lots of wacky, now long discredited science to go with it. Yeah. Um, but it was really to create this kind of superior race. I mean, it was to create a superior race. What about the Klan? Well, you know, the Klan obviously resonated immediately with the ideas of Sanger. And Sanger, though not, again, not a redneck racist, right. she saw the, An opportunity? the key to capturing sure. uh, uh, border states and southern right. states as uh, cozying up to the Klan. And so she spoke at several Klan meetings uh, mm. during the course of her early days. Now, you know, after World War II got started, yeah. uh, the, the folks around her helped her wise up, and she cleaned up her language a great deal. Mm -hmm. And so when— Kind of re rebranding re brand, In fact, they renamed uh, right. the organization Planned Parenthood in 1941. What was it before? It was uh, the, um, the American Birth Control League. Okay. That became Planned Parenthood. And that became Planned Parenthood. The Birth Control Review was founded in 1917, the League in 1922, and then uh, in 1941 and 42, they, they started to make the shift to Planned Parenthood. But let's take, take a look post-1945, so kind of getting to the post-World War II era. That's when you start seeing a change institutionally within the United States as well. So this, she starts having a real political impact. Uh, and Planned Parenthood does, really in the late 40s, early 50s. Is that a, a pretty accurate? Yeah, she, she actually married into the three-in-one oil fortune. Right. And uh, as a result, she, she gained access to the captains of industry. Um, she, was, uh, she was a heavy contributor to political campaigns. And so she, she got you know, sort of on the inside of the political establishment. And, and both conservative and liberal, I, I must add. She yep. was very close to Barry Goldwater, yep. uh, for instance. So um, she became very savvy. And so uh, she, let's by the talk time about, she did her famous yeah. Mike Wallace interview, right. she, was, uh, she, she was a part of the establishment. I, mean, I want to go back on that because she knew to play both political parties. Absolutely. And you have Barry Goldwater, people say the founder of the modern Republican conservative movement, right. bought into the deception. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and this is... Way beyond politics here. It is way beyond politics. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that we need to understand. Planned Parenthood has, has been a part of this r radical agenda for a very, very long time. Uh, Margaret Sanger in 1922 in a conference described it as the, uh, the strategy of the robes. Mm. Uh, it's a phrase that later Saul Alinsky, mm. the yeah. famous yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, revolutionary yep. uh, mentor to guys like uh, Barack Obama, mm -hmm. Uh, used the, the idea of the strategy of the robes is look we, we don't want to capture this political party or that political party because then we're at the mercy of the winds of whatever the right. political, you know, political climate right. is at the time so what we want to do is we want to capture the robes mm. the robes of the judiciary yep the they robes the of court. academia mm. and the robes of the clergy yeah so they had the clergy the lawyers the judges and the professors. And the professors. And that was their three, that was kind of their triangulation theory. Exactly. And if you have that, then of course you're going to have Congress in your pocket. Of course you're going to have the captains of industry, uh, major philanthropic foundations on your side. It's a brilliant strategy. Yeah. And it, it's a strategy they've implemented. And the fact of the matter is, George, I mean, we look at this politically, and I don't want to, and it's way beyond politics. But we've had Republican presidents with Republican-led Congresses and still cannot defund Planned Parenthood. Exactly. So their their ability to ingrain themselves into the culture has been pretty phenomenal. It has been. The other thing, though, that we have to remember is that this really, the, the, the whole thing just really started following World War II. Right. I mean, it was it was very much a radical movement prior yep. to that. During World War One, just starting uh, during the Depression, didn't get much didn't attention. Didn't get much traction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th there were a few Southern yeah. states that implemented eugenic sterilization right. laws, um, the famous Kerry Buck stories right. and so forth. Uh, but it's after World War Two, so we're really just talking about seventy years. Yeah, history. Seventy right. years. Uh, you know, a, a, a single generation in a sense. Yep which tells us what can be done. 
if you really have a focused strategy, pull the resources together and stick to your guns. Let me ask you this. There's a sense of vulnerability. But there's also the sense that right now Planned Parenthood, according to the most recent statistics, $532 million of our taxpayer money goes to them every year. Right. And and, and, and that's on the low side. Yes, because I think it's, I think it's twice that, you've actually. Because you've got uh, billables as right. well from Title 19. Exactly. And, the funding that they get exactly. through their, their what they call soft billing. Right. How vulnerable do you think they are right now? Well, I, th- I think they've certainly got a public relations crisis on their hands. And but crises tend to pass. They do. They tend to pass. Um the, the worst storms. You batten yep. down the hatches, you let it blow through, right. and then you do a little bit of cleanup, and then right. it's back to business as usual. Yeah. That's their plan. But our follow-up, what we do, th- those who love freedom, those who are yep. sickened by what yep. we have seen, and, and those who, quite frankly, may be pro-choice but don't want tax dollars going to a corrupt organization, right. if we have follow-through, there are some immediate soft targets that I think we can see start to fall. Of course, our, our government affairs office in Washington is working Capitol Hill. There's going to be hearings. There'll be oversight. Department of Justice won't do anything. Congress may pass or may not pass. The president may veto, may not veto. That's going to that's going to take a long time. You it think will. there's immediate uh, potential here for action? Let's I do. talk about that. I do. I think first of all, ordinary people have been the ones who have driven this through just social media explosion. Right. It's all over Facebook. Yep. It's all over yep. Twitter. It needs to stay there. Yep. So don't let it die. Don't let as it As the die. news cycle goes on, as the next crisis, don't let this yeah, one... Yeah, keep those yeah. hashtags. Keep yep. that, you know, right. that pressure on. Yep. Because that's the only reason that most of the media even covered this story. They couldn't ignore it yep. anymore because we were going bonkers. Right. And the pressure on the filmmaker is going to be unbelievably intense. We need to pray for them. And um, I, I, we've offered if they need legal help, we'll be happy to do it. But besides that, that is good. there's going to be a lot of pressure coming there. Yeah. So, but, let, but let's take it to the next step. So uh, two weeks from now, two months from now, what should we be doing? Well, the other thing that we should be doing is, is we, we need to realize that there are some places that Planned Parenthood gets a lot of money. Independent of the tax dollars. Independent of the tax dollars right. that we can have sway over. Right. The products that we buy, the corporations that we uh, go and patronize. Those corporations give millions of dollars to Planned Parenthood. And so what we need to do is we need to put the pressure on companies like uh, Pepsi and Starbucks and uh, Coca-Cola, uh, Coca-Cola um, uh, Target. Yep. Big retail chains, right? Big retail chains, Macy's. We yep. need to put the pressure on them and say, uh, look, we, we we love your store or we love your product, but we don't want our dollars going to Planned Parenthood. So let, let's, let's uh, you know, I think these filmmakers have done a very good job of putting out the nine-minute version, but also the three-hour version. Right. So it shows the context is exactly yeah. what it is. Disgusting. Yeah. I mean, can't, can't say this is the edited right. video yeah, anymore. This, it's disgusting. it's all out there. Yeah, it's all out there. Does the disgust factor here, does the revulsion factor here rise to the point where these retailers, where these product suppliers have to say, we've got a serious problem if we're going to sponsor this, if we're going to give this entity money. I don't think that the retailers will have that disgust factor, but if we do, yep. they will. Be- just out of sheer dollars and cents. Just out of sheer dollars and cents. So what George is saying, and I want to underscore this, folks, is we got to take more action than just writing a letter to, to Congress here. We've got a lot more ahead with George Grant. I want to encourage you to add your name to our petition right now to defund Planned Parenthood. It's gaining tremendous support, well over 100,000 signatures and growing. We also want investigations. Congress says they are going to do that. We need to urge them. We cannot, for a moment, let up uh, the attack here. And I say attack because, believe me, Planned Parenthood is attacking back. So we need to fight to get this information out and then stop the defunding of Planned Parenthood. You can go to aclj.org or call us at 1-877-989-2255. That's aclj.org or 1-877-989-2255 to have your voice heard, to defund Planned Parenthood, hold them accountable, aclj.org or 1-877-989-2255. More in just a moment. 
You already know that the nation's largest abortion provider, Planned Parenthood, received $1.5 billion in taxpayer dollars in the last three years alone. That money frees up other funds so Planned Parenthood can perform hundreds of thousands of abortions. Now, a startling and gruesome revelation. Planned Parenthood is now harvesting body parts from butchered babies. A senior Planned Parenthood abortionist has been caught on camera detailing how they crush the baby, altering the abortion procedure so they are, quote, very good at getting heart, lung, liver. Then they sell the baby's organs. It's time to stop this abhorrent practice. Stand with the American Center for Law and Justice and demand that Congress defund Planned Parenthood. No more taxpayer dollars for this abortion giant. Call now, 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255, or add your name online, aclj.org. Welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. Let's go right back to our interview with the leading expert on Planned Parenthood, Dr. George Grant. Planned Parenthood will say, you know, only 3% of the work that they do is abortion-related. What they don't tell you is that they they actually list every single procedure through right. from intake uh, to uh, right. to follow up as a separate, separate procedure. procedure. Yeah. So if you go in for an abortion, it's it's it can actually be between six and twelve procedures. Yeah. But the, but they'll only count it as one. Right. Now part of what they've also done is they 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 will say they'll make the line. We're not taking your taxpayer dollars for abortions. But what they don't say is, but of course, that frees up. So you get $500 million from the government or $100 million from charities or whatever the number is. That frees up their capability to spend more money exactly. on their abortion, which is their, their business is abortion. Right. So we shouldn't be – to, to those of us that are pro-life, uh, in, especially in the, within the Christian community, none of this should be surprising to us. We, we, we've known they've been doing of this. Of course. I mean, these are people that defended live birth abortions. I mean, so th this whole idea that this is repulsive, which it is because it's disgusting, uh, may be – illegal depending on how these facts develop but right. it, and if it's not illegal it sure should be and that's sure another issue be. that's right so let's go back to the, the 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 local pressure the community chest pressure the 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 pressure on the the charities the pressures on these retailers the concern i have and this is, i know it's the concern you share is we tend to be as a society a very short attention span very forgetful so you expect here planned parenthood within the weeks be putting on a very i mean they're going to have to take some names terminate some people change some policies to try right. to get this to go away right how do we respond when that happens because that's going to happen well one of the things that has to occur if we're going to gain momentum is that pastors are going to have to speak right they don't have to become political they right. don't have to become agitators they don't have to become social activists in your pastoral prayer on Sunday, Pastor, would you just simply pray for the local crisis pregnancy center right. and just mention the crisis, the scandal of Planned Parenthood? It, it, it can be a throwaway half line, half sentence, but continue to set before your people the model of righteousness and connectedness. You know, the modern evangelical church in particular is all agog about being relevant. Right. Well, here's relevancy, Pastor. Yeah. We don't have to ignore any of these things because the Bible gives us a comprehensive grid through which we can understand the whole of life. Um, there's this wonderful Abraham Kuyper quote, which yep. I know you know. I know. Yep. But uh, he, he said, uh, there is not one square inch not one square. in the whole domain of human existence over which Christ, who is sovereign over all, does not say mine. Mine, right. Famous, is mine. Yeah, Kuiper quote. That's that's the way we ought to be living. I I still think this is a unique situation. I don't think we've seen this in thirty years. But what what's your hope in all this? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I um I, I think that there is a level of real hope, not to abolish abortion, right? Uh, not not to even get rid of Planned Parenthood, right. but but I think that what we have done is uh, we have seen the beginning of a stigmatization process. Yeah. Um, th think of uh, Amsterdam's red light districts. We've just shoved Planned Parenthood yep. off of Main Street yep. and into the a red light stigmatized district. Exists. So 
because they are ingrained, I want to I want to go to the politics for a moment. There's gonna, there's a political consequence to this, right? So you've got people calling for, I mean, there's a bipartisan letter with uh, Democrats and Republicans calling for an investigation. Uh, I I don't even pretend for a moment to think that the Department of Justice will do anything. They'll do nothing except maybe go after the filmmaker, which that's another situation. Uh, but there is this sense among people in Congress right now, I'm talking to our government affairs office earlier today, that the outrage factor here, because of our people, is palpable. I mean, Congress, as they're ending their session, I mean, it's coming to an end in days, they're feeling this, and right. this is significant for them. I had a congressional staffer tell me that uh, that her boss, who is not pro-life, right. has set aside um, a whole half day every single day for one of the interns to just monitor social media because. on this issue. So this has reached a... Uh, Cecilia uh, Richards coming out so quickly yeah. to... Uh, she thought she was going to clamp it down. Yeah, she, she did. She did, and she thought she was on top of it, and it it has just spiraled all the more. And I, I don't want to leave this broadcast without people understanding that we have the ultimate hope and we have the ultimate victory here. We do. We know how all of this turns out in the end. Um, what What's glorious is, Jay, you and I... And all of those who are listening to our voices right now have been chosen for this moment in history right, this time. to fight this battle, to be used of the Lord to bring the hope of the gospel to so many women and families who really have no hope, right. who've been bamboozled by these government programs and Planned yep. Parenthood programs into thinking that that was the answer. Now we have the opportunity to come alongside them and say there is a deeper, more profound answer, a hope not just for today or for this particular pregnancy or this particular problem child, but, but for the rest of your life. So we win. So we win. And I want to encourage you to stand with us as we seek to finally defund Planned Parenthood and hold them accountable for this heinous act that they're engaged in, that they're defending. Yet many of their people that normally defend them are remaining silent. Corporations are peeling away from supporting Planned Parenthood. This is the time for action. ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. That's ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255 to sign our petition and have your voice heard. Again, ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255. We'll talk to you next week. You already know that the nation's largest abortion provider, Planned Parenthood, received $1.5 billion in taxpayer dollars in the last three years alone. That money frees up other funds so Planned Parenthood can perform hundreds of thousands of abortions. Now, a startling and gruesome revelation. Planned Parenthood is now harvesting body parts from butchered babies. A senior Planned Parenthood abortionist has been caught on camera detailing how they crush the baby, altering the abortion procedure so they are, quote, very good at getting heart, lung, liver. Then they sell the baby's organs. It's time to stop this abhorrent practice. Stand with the American Center for Law and Justice and demand that Congress defund Planned Parenthood. No more taxpayer dollars for this abortion giant. Call now, 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255 or add your name online, aclj.org.